Support for the Zest podcast comes from Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Florida residents can help drive the recovery of our ocean's coral reefs by selecting the Protect Our Reefs plate when renewing their license plate. Learn more at MoatReefPlate.com. I always like to say comparing my hot dog to what you buy like in a, in a convenience store is like comparing Golden Corral to Burns Steakhouse. There, there's just, there is no comparison. I'm Robin Sessingham, and this is The Zest. Citrus, seafood, Spanish flavor, and southern charm were all about food in Florida. It's the quintessential 4th of July food, the hot dog. Today, we'll meet the owner of Mel's Hot Dogs in Tampa and get tips for making your best hot dog at home. We'd love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook at The Zest Podcast. What are you making for the 4th? Support for the Zest Podcast comes from Seitenbacher brand natural foods like muesli cereals, oils, oatmeal, energy bars, gluten-free fruit gummies for the kids, organic coffee, and more. Available in supermarkets, health food stores, or online at seitenbacher.com. If you're prepping for a cookout or seeking to recreate stadium-quality hot dogs at home, Mel Lone can help. He's the larger-than-life personality behind Mel's Hot Dogs. This month marks 47 years that Mel and his wife, Virginia, have been operating the restaurant, which has become a Tampa institution. Producer Delia Colon spoke with Mel about the eatery's early days and how to make a better hot dog at home. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and subhumans, my name is Mel Lone, L-O-H-N. I am with my wife, the owner of Mel's Hot Dogs, Tampa's premier eating establishment located at 4136 East Bush Boulevard, one block east of Bush Gardens. Oh, well, I can already tell you're shy, so this is not going to go well. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me about Mel's Hot Dogs. When and how did this get started? Mel Lone came to Florida in 1968 in a rock and roll band. December of 1968, discovered winters in Florida, said he's never leaving. Having grown up in Chicago, which has thousands of little tiny hot dog stands, Mel went out to get a hot dog up in Tampa. Wasn't a hot dog stand. Not a single one. He said to himself, self, I'm going to open up a hot dog joint between rock and roll bands. It has now been 47 years. I am still between rock and roll bands. And hot dogs have been very, very good to me. (laughs) What were those early days like? Were people immediately receptive? Yeah, you know, it was kind of cute because the very first day we weren't even ready to open yet. We were just messing around trying to figure out what we were doing because I had no idea about the restaurant business. Had no licenses, no permits. I just put the place together with a couple of friends and opened up and waiting for the Coca-Cola people to come and install my menu board. And the guy pops his head in the door and says, what are y'all doing here? I said, hey, I'm getting ready to sell hot dogs. He said, got any ready to sell? Yeah. And we started selling hot dogs, and I did $99 worth of business my first day. This is in July of 1973. $99, that was a substantial amount of money. And at the end of the day, I said to myself, I'm going to be rich. (laughs) $99. Well, it seems like it worked out pretty well for you. (laughs) Now, tell me how the menu has changed, because I was looking at your menu online, and you've got like low-fat offerings and veggie dogs, and I'm guessing you didn't have those starting out. So how have things changed over the years? Well, in the beginning, I did a kind of like a Chicago deli kind of a thing. And I mean, they had corned beef and pastrami sandwiches and things that didn't sell and things that I refused to sell. Like I didn't want to sell hamburgers because I was a hot dog joint. I was a purist and I didn't have chili dogs or slaw dogs or corn dogs because these are not things that were common in Chicago in hot dog places. And uh, I remember customers coming in, and, and, and I said, that's not a Chicago thing. And, and the old redneck said to me, boy, you ain't in Chicago. <laughs> and so now we have chili dogs and slaw dogs. And, and you know with the, the the fads, we have a, a wonderful veggie burger. We have a veggie dog. We have low-fat hot dogs. Pretty much whatever a customer wants. A guy came in, y'all got chili slaw dogs? And, and I said, no, we don't do that to our hot dogs. Well, hell, what's wrong with you, boy? 
and uh, we now have chili slaw dogs. <laughs> you, you want it? I'll even put mayonnaise and ketchup. <laughs> That's horrible on a hot dog. Now, you're from Chicago, so what's a Chicago dog? A Chicago dog is a Vienna beef hot dog made by the Vienna, Vienna Beef Manufacturing Company in Chicago and served on a poppy seed bun made by Rosen's Bakery. It has on it mustard, sweet Spanish onions, sweet pickle relish called pickle lily in Chicago, a couple of slices of tomatoes, a splash or two of celery salt, a slice of kosher dill pickle, and two baby Mexican hot sport peppers. It is a garden on a dog. Drag it through the garden is the common expression in Chicago. It's practically a salad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complete meal because you get meat, bread, and salad all in one. That's the joke That's in the funny. city. <laughs> now, what about New York dogs? I mean, people are very sort of loyal to their regional hot dogs. You can put ketchup on this and you can't do that. Are you familiar with what a New York dog would be? Well, you know, New Yorkers like spicy brown mustard more commonly and sauerkraut. And we would get an occasional request for that tomato and onion sauce. And we brought it in and it just it, it was an item that never moved. Very, very, very poor seller. So we bailed out on that. But New Yorkers like sauerkraut. We got barrel cured sauerkraut, magnificent sauerkraut. Trying to make them happy people. Mm -hmm. If you did a Florida dog or a Tampa dog, what would that have on it? I got a Tampa dog. A Tampa dog's whatever you want on your hot dog, I'm going to do it. I, I would <laughs> laughingly say I got a couple of rednecks that come in and, and, and I love them. Wonderful people, regular customers. I mean, mayonnaise and ketchup. Unheard of. I mean, in Chicago, they would throw you out of a hot dog joint if you said mayonnaise and ketchup. You know what? That combination is popular. My husband's Puerto Rican, and they make tostones, which are like fried plantains, and they dip it in a mayonnaise and ketchup mixture. Ugh. So that could be a Florida kind of Caribbean hot dog. I don't know. Something to think about. You can you can call it. You can name it after me. It's fine. Well, I can. <laughs> I can. We can call it the uh, you know the Jose. Yes, butter. No, we we tried like uh, we tried some Latino themed things uh, with salsa and guacamole sauce and sour cream and stuff. But the reality is, most people want traditional style hot dogs. The vast majority. I mean, we'll get one request, two requests a week for something unusual. But people want a bacon cheddar dog. They want a chili dog. They want the Mel Special all the way with mustard, onion, sauerkraut, relish, and pickle. They want the Chicago dog. Now, and then there's purists like me. Truthfully, if someone would ask me my absolute favorite, it's the Vienna beef hot dog with just a thin line of mustard on it. Because to me, the, the magnificent taste of the beef is covered when you put too many condiments on it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm a purist. You're a purist, but what does that even mean? Like, I think people think of a hot dog as just all the parts that nothing could be done with and kind of mixed together. So what is a hot dog? Well, technically a hot dog is a shape of ground something sausage. But that's like saying, what is a car? A Yugo, that famous car from the Soviet Union, is a car. Uh, a Rolls Royce is a car. Can you compare the two of them? No. I mean, there's this, there's amazingly difference. I always like to say comparing my hot dog to what you buy, like in a, in a convenience store, is like comparing Golden Corral to Burns Steakhouse. There, there's just, there is no comparison. My hot dog is made out of whole sides of beef. One of the comments that we hear most often when people bite into one of our hot dogs is, wow, I didn't know a hot dog could taste this good. There is a difference in product. There's all beef hot dogs. There's all meat hot dogs. You know, I mean, what is meat? Chicken, turkey, that's all meat. There's hot dog hot dogs that are made with, well, I call them devil dogs because only the devil knows what's in them. But we sell a super premium natural casing. It's actually a hand-stuffed smoked sausage hot dog. And that's what made the difference over the years because people would butt in and go, wow. I mean, we also hear, wow, these hot dogs are expensive, but they are, and they are. They're, to me, it's crazy, $4.50 for a hot dog. That's insane. But, I mean, I go to Publix and spend $200 buying a few groceries, so I understand. Do you feel like hot dogs get the respect they deserve? My hot dogs do, and it's, it's an interesting story because 
as a general rule, I don't think much of anything in this world gets the respect it deserves anymore from the presidency on down. You've got to reflect on, on the individualism and the uniqueness of whatever it is you're talking about. But, yeah, I think, hot, yeah, I mean, to me, hot dogs are on the pinnacle of the world. I mean, I've been hustling them for the last 47 years, so how can they not be right? <laughs> so I just read a New York Times article saying that hot dogs are making a comeback during people being safer at home. And their logic was it's a it's a beach food and an amusement park food that you can make at home. It's something that's quick that you can freeze. So what are your thoughts on this? As hot dogs are like becoming a quarantine staple. Well, see, I don't see them making a comeback because I don't think they ever went away. I mean, my business has grown steadily over four and a half decades. Wow. I opened up when I was seven, by the way. I just want you to know that. So, of course. I mean, my business has been solid, even even in this crazy time with, with this quarantine. I mean, when, when we first went into quarantine, my business, like, collapsed and, and I was terrorized and my wife said, what are we going to do? And I said, well, we'll just write it out. You know, we're financially, we're in a position to write it out. We'll just carry our, our three or four key employees. And and all of a sudden we were starting to do a tremendous amount of takeout. And we, then we offered a curbside service for those that didn't want to get out of their car. And we called it, let us walk your dog. <laughs> <laughs> We'd walk your dog out to your car. But we were doing some outstanding numbers on takeout only. And and my wife and I looked at each other with wonderment and said, wow, how wonderful a feeling it is to know that you've got such an amazingly loyal customer base. Oh, yeah, that's got to be a good feeling. Ooh, and now with, with Inside Dining, I mean, we're coming up to some f almost, almost normal numbers. I mean, we can't because there's just not enough room, but we've got some almost normal numbers. What do you think it is besides your fun personality? Like I would I would love to go hang out with you and eat or just sit there and chat. But what do you think it is about hot dogs? It seems like so many of our memories, whether it's camping or sporting events, um, are wrapped up in hot dogs. <laughs> and so they kind of are the ultimate comfort food for a lot of us. Why do you think that is? It is a comfort food because everybody, except for my wife, grew up eating hot dogs. My wife refused to eat hot dogs when she was a kid because my in-laws were, you know, not financially affluent. And my mother-in-law bought really inexpensive hot dogs. So my wife didn't grow up eating hot dogs, but I did. I mean, one of my earliest memories was like standing next to my father at a hot dog joint in Chicago, and, and him handing me down a hot dog. I mean, it's just been a part of my life forever. And in Chicago, again, there's thousands of them. There's a couple of thousand little hot dog stands, mostly with no seating. That's why they're called hot dog stands. You stand up and eat. And people love them. The reason I think Mel's Hot Dogs is successful to the level that it is is because people in Florida didn't know there was such a high-quality hot dog. Did you grow up going to baseball games and having hot dogs at the stadium? No, I was too poor to go to baseball games. I didn't go to baseball games till I was a teenager. In Chicago, there is, again, 2,000 or so hot dog places, little tiny hot dog stands, and, and every, every neighborhood block has one. So I would go to Learner's Hot Dogs on Bryn Mawr and and get my hot dog and drag a bunch of them home. Never, I, I don't think I've ever eaten one at a baseball game. Really? Well, you're going to ruin my next question because <laughs> a lot of people are missing that baseball stadium hot dog experience. How can they recreate it at home? Well, you can actually buy uh, Vienna beef hot dogs online. They There's such a demand for displaced Chicagoans all over the country, all over the world. They have a website. It's ViennaBeef.com, and they'll send you a package with everything you need to make a Chicago dog at home. And it's it's pretty good, but we laugh because when I make hot dogs at home, they don't taste as good as when I make them in the store. And it's the equipment that we use. And, and like, you know, our steam table is seasoned from cooking so many hot dogs. You know, the equipment picks up characteristics of what you're cooking in it, you know, like a cast iron skillet. So... It makes a difference what you're cooking in, the temperature that you're cooking, knowing how long to cook it. I don't do them at home. I mean, I've, I've been known to do it. We, we've had kids' parties, and I've got a little portable 
cooker. For, it's very cute, but I'd rather bring them home from the store. Yeah, you're spoiled. <laughs> I'm I'm spoiled rotten. Even you know, you, you, in that same line, my my staff laughs when I'm eating in my restaurant. See, to me, if a hot dog's five minutes old, it's not good. So I'll make my own hot dog. I immediately walk back to my desk and start eating. And everybody knows, do not disturb him. He's eating his hot dog. <laughs> it's got to be hot. Got to be right now. <laughs> if we were going to go online, order the beef, how would, first of all, how would that even come? Does it come on dry ice? <laughs> It comes in styrofoam and it come in a styrofoam cooler container and they have some kind of a cooling thing. I've never ordered it. They've told me about it because I've asked them, you know, how do you do this? And they said, you know, there's a refrigerate, refrigerant item inside there to keep it cold. I don't know if it's dry ice or just a cold pack, but it comes fine. And then what would you do? Would you boil it, grill it, Well, see, that's what it? people think. You, you don't boil hot dogs. A hot dog is a fully cooked item. So all you want to do is heat it up, and people put, you know, a, a medium quality all beef. Don't ever eat anything but beef. Hot dog, if you just put it in real hot water, 175, 180 degrees, for three or four minutes, the hot dog's ready to go. All you're doing is heating it up. When you boil it, you boil all the flavor out, and then you got this. That's why people say this hot dog is boring. And yeah, all the flavor's in the water. Oh, and then you have that disgusting water that's like salty and you have to pour it into the sink. Just heat it up or put it on a grill, but I, I like my hot dog steamed. So you said it's already cooked and don't eat anything but beef. Why? So no pork hot dogs, turkey hot dogs? Um, You know, I, I, I eat pork, uh, but see, again, it's it's my childhood taste. I was raised on all beef hot dogs. I mean, a boar's head makes a beef and pork hot dog. I've tasted it. It's not my favorite, but boar's head also makes a natural casing beef hot dog. That's pretty good. The spice profile is bland to me. It, you know, it's lacking in a lot of zing. It doesn't have a lot of uh, peppers in it. It doesn't have a lot of garlic in it. So it's kind of a blandy taste, but it's decent. But again, if I was at home and, and I was not a retailer, I would be ordering from ViennaBeef.com. Gotcha. And then... How would you do the bun? Double boiler, steam them for two minutes in there, and the buns get warm, and and with a like a hint of moisture, you think they just came out of an oven. Oh, they're wonderful. Double boiler. I would have gone like toaster oven, <laughs> but that's why you're the hot dog king. When you toast them, you dry them out. Who wants dry bread, moist bread? And when you think that the bread is half of a sandwich, if you got a hot meat. And a cold bread, you got to compromise. But if you got hot meat and warm bread, they complement one another. Hmm, that's deep. You're getting real deep with this, Mel. <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. I got a few, a few tricks of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to add that I didn't ask you about? So here's a closer for you. So the dog is the noblest of animals, in my opinion. And the hot dog the noblest of dogs, for it feeds the hand that bites it. <laughs> <laughs> good, that's good. Mel, this was fun. Well, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. All right, best of luck to you and a happy summer full of hot dogs. You have a wonderful day. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done. That was Delia Cologne speaking with Mel Lone, co-owner of Mel's Hot Dogs in Tampa. Next week on The Zest, we're going to the beach and whipping up the ultimate beach house menu. Join us. I'm Robin Sussingham. Delia Cologne and I produced The Zest with help from Cheyenne Jaglau, Mark Hayes, and Janet Keeler. Copyright 2020, WUSF Public Media, University of South Florida.